Why does every guy cheat on you? Trust me, I know. How come girls always call you their friend? I can tell you. We'll talk about your strength and we'll talk about emotions. Secrets of Birthdays, now live for purchase. Check out yours at secretsofbirthdays.com. Hello, my fellow soul gardeners, and welcome now to Astro 102. We're in episode three. We are teaching astrology, and we are talking about the houses, those imaginary little pie shapes that go around the chart. Those pie shapes divide up our life basically in different categories or different states of consciousness. So last week we talked about the second and the eighth house. Now today we will talk about the third house, and we will talk about the ninth house. Okay, see a little diagram. So let's start with the third house, shall we? The third house is the natural house of Gemini, all right? And what Geminis do, or the state of consciousness they hold, is communication. But it's even deeper than that. It is your mind. It's how your mind works. I look at the twins, like I said in earlier shows, as the two parts of the intellectual process. There is the inner dialogue, that's one twin, and there's the outer dialogue, that's the other twin. So the two-faced kind of side of Gemini is that you're seeing their mind or how their mind operates when they bring out that character. What it comes down to, though, in a chart, is it tells us astrologers about how you think, all right, how you process information. And whatever sign is ruling that house, okay, which is the sign that the, the house cusp uh, is crossing, what's crossing the house cusp, that's how you process your thoughts from that state of conscious or using that state of conscious as kind of like the governor of it. So when I look at a third house, I know how their mind operates, how they put things together, how they communicate. If they're a person that communicates a lot or doesn't communicate a lot, I can tell right off the bat if there's a lot of information in that house, like the sun, for instance. If the sun is in the third house, that person is a messenger almost all the time. Somehow they're a messenger. So they tend to be reporters. They tend to be authors. They tend to be on Soul Garden for a living. They have a message to say. They like putting pieces of information together. And that's why also Geminis are kind of two-faced in a sense, because they're always looking at both sides of the fence. Also, if there's a heavier planet in this house, for instance, Pluto, that tells me that this person has a processing problem, a huge processing problem, because it's Pluto, after all, right? Therefore, that can be a mind game that they fall into. So people with severe depression tend to have uh, darker planets in the third house, or Uranus in the third house, for instance. Uh, people who get lost in worry, who like live their life with all kinds of phobias, where they're in their head all the time and they can't get out of their head, you'll see some heavier stuff there as well. And also, this is where people's attitudes come from. Your attitude is a mindset that your mind is already in. It's a prejudice, right? So for instance, if you have Jupiter in the third house, you have a very optimistic mindset. You probably also can't stop talking. <laughs> Those chatty Cathy's have Jupiter in the third house because they have so much abundant energy when it comes to communication. I'd also read Jupiter in the third house as someone who has fortune from communicating. The universe wants you to communicate, wants you to uh, get the message out there, etc. So it tells us our mental health. It tells us where our mind games are. And if the moon is in the third house, this is another example, this is a person that can really express their emotions very well, which is not an easy thing to do. A lot of us don't know how to talk about our emotions and get things off our chest and whatnot. Now remember, if the sun is there, I just want to point something out. Wherever the sun is in your chart is where your life revolves around. Your whole life revolves around where the sun is. So just kind of to say it again, sun in the third house means your whole life revolves around a message, around speaking a message. And I looked up a famous person who has their sun in the third house, Walt Disney. Walt Disney was a Sagittarius, and he was really all about the message. It's a small world after all, right? Very Sagittarius, it's a small world, very good positive message, and really there was always a message in all of his works. Now directly across from the third house is the ninth house. These two again are the polar opposites of one another. The ninth house is all of our thoughts built up into a belief structure. The ninth house is your collective consciousness, your collective consciousness, okay? All of your beliefs and why. So this is where philosophy falls into. What's your philosophy of life, which comes with all kinds of different facts and tidbits. This is the natural house ruled by Sagittarius. They rule the collective consciousness. They are good. They are really good at having all these different ideas, but they have a hard time boiling it down to one sentence, which would be a Gemini trait, right? <laughs> That's a Gemini talent. The Sagittarius talent is to understand all. So whatever is going on in the third house, if you have a son in the third house, this is that your whole life revolves around your philosophy. Your whole life revolves around your religion. And you're likely a teacher. 
Usually some of the Ninth House people are teachers. They're here to share all that wisdom with people. And because they understand this belief structure and that belief structure, or let's say this religion and that religion, they understand how religions overlap. They understand how consciousness overlaps. So they're really good translators as a result of information. They can say, oh, you know, a Catholic is just like a Baptist in these sorts of ways. They don't have very many prejudices. And when there's a son actually in the Ninth House, they usually don't like labels. I always find that out. I'm like, oh, oh are you a cowboy? Well, not really. I just ride horses five days a week. Okay, <laughs> you know, they don't want to be labeled, just like Sagittarius is don't want to be labeled because they see the gray, they see all the details. So depending on what's in your, in your ninth house, that tells me how your collective consciousness works. And if I find something like Pluto in the ninth house, this is usually someone who is born to a very strict religious family, very narrow-minded. They have not gotten out much. They have not traveled the world. They have not expanded their mind. They have the karma of educating themselves and expanding their consciousness. It's really shut down, so to speak. This is also known as the house of travel, and that's just because uh, traveling really involves expansion of consciousness. You go put yourself in a foreign land, taste foreign foods, etc. you're going to expand your consciousness. I didn't know that green peppers could be cooked this way. Well, they are in Italy, right? So travel does fall into this house as well. And if your son is in, like I said, the ninth house, your whole life revolves around your wisdom. And quite often, there's a huge student uh, chapter of your life where you study, 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 study. And then there's usually a chapter where you end up teaching and teaching and teaching. One last thing I'll say about the son of the ninth, they tend to have an insatiable appetite for information. These are the people that I find in school, in college still, after 20 years, and they're going to change their major again. And I always say to them, get out and teach. Quit absorbing. You're always going to learn. You're always going to have a good time there. If Jupiter is in this house, this is very fortunate. That means that every time you expand your own wisdom, there will be, in fact, good fortune that comes in, and it'll be easy for you to find facts. The universe is always supporting your expansion. Now, as a celebrity example of Son of the Ninth House, Dr. Martin Luther King had his son in the Ninth House. Makes total sense, right? All about his philosophy. He was literally a preacher. He was literally a teacher. He literally liberated our limited beliefs when it came to racists and racism, et cetera, and equal rights and civil rights. So he is a beautiful example of what a son in the ninth house can, in fact, be. And if you're curious, he was a Capricorn, which is why I think he came off so polished and crisp in his presentation. So that wraps up our third ninth house paradigm today. Remember, the balance between the two is how you speak, how you communicate, how you process thought. And the ninth house is how you organize that thought into a collective consciousness for yourself, into your collective wisdom, into your collective philosophy, basically your belief structure. What do you believe in and why? All right, that's all I have for this episode of Astro 102. Be sure to come back next week. We're going to talk about the fourth and the tenth house, and I will see you then. Why does every guy cheat on you? Trust me, I know. How come girls always call you their friend? I can tell you. We'll talk about your strength and we'll talk about emotions. Secrets of Birthdays, now live for purchase. Check out yours at secretsofbirthdays.com. So